very pleased today to be talking with um, two brothers who have been in the Moore Science Temple of America for a number of years. Um, to my right is Brother G. Cook Bay, and to my left is Brother I. Cook Bay. Um, I will allow them to give you their titles and, and so on. Um, I'd, I'd like to start out, though, um, by asking, first of all, um, to uh, Brother G. Cook Bay, how did you happen to come into the Moore Science Temple of America? Well, I come into, uh, into the Moore Science Temple of America till one day my brother I. Cook Bay, he said, I asked him concerning about this prophet, and he told me there's a man down there on, he's on the State Street, was teaching at the time, said we are not colored people or Negroes. And he said, we are Asiatics. I said, that's so. Mm -hmm. Then I said, uh, I go with you to the temple then, at 3603 in Anna Avenue. Then I go the first night, that during 1925, and I enter into the uh, 3603 and I, then I have a chance to uh, see the prophet that I heard of him through my brother. When he come from the back part of the building, come to the front, we all of us, they, they stood up. And when I looked at I said, when I looked at him, I said, within myself. I said, I never seen a man look like this man before. Mm -hmm. And he was uh, the prophet Joali. Then therefore, after that later, I come in, I, first night I came, I got my identification card. Mm -hmm. Then after that, I stayed a good while, then I got married. And therefore, and then I lived on the second floor there, and he was on the first floor. And one night then, uh, very, very short. The prophet came in. There was a sister named Sister Long Bay. She had a helmet. She bleed from her mouth and her nose. And I worked uh, with a brother Whitehead and, and his wife. We worked with her. And we couldn't do anything but put scissors in her hair and put nails and so forth, matches and so forth. Yeah, brother, he, he came up, looked, he went on about his business, come back. Then I watched his eyes. He was a man, we, he just looked at the sister to flood his eyes. That blood ceased to be. Mm. And, that, uh, and the sister went on into a room. Conscious of herself just like we are here to, to, today. Mm. Then after that, I was uh, that holy prophet. And I come to be a sheep. And I take that cheek vow. After he d did this great macro, and I saw this, I said, nobody can tell me this ain't Jesus. <laughs> I said, never seen, I said, I read of this in the building history of the European. He said, there was a woman who had initial blood for seven years. That woman just touched his garment and diverted him without to heal this woman. He didn't ask the question who touched him at all. The woman was seven years, she come to be a sound well woman. Then after that, I taken that vow, went on into the chamber, and, and come to be sheikh, and I was the first uh, muffin in the United States, the prophet taking the black fish from his head and placed it on my head. And then he told me, the son, take the streets. All the rest of the administration, the, the holiness people in the church, people ran, ran them in. When he turned me loose, I was just like a lamb. I conquered every demon rose up against me. When I put them out of business, they left there, and then one another one came up talking to me, uh, interrupting me by teaching in the street. And I pulled it to the prophet when I come in that night. Noble Dryer says, son, you go ahead. You won't see him no more. You won't be, you won't be bothering him. And that was all of that. Then I appreciate it very much. Then the later years, we gone on, to, he sent me out on the field. Then I left there doing that in 1929. And 25 I left and went on out on the field, stopped in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, on to, uh, one of the head official, Brother uh, Krim Bay. He was a governor at that time of uh, Baltimore, I want to say, into uh, Pittsburgh. And I stayed there a while. 
And then from that, I went on into Baltimore, Maryland. During 1925 and 28, I and my brother, with his help, the prophet sent him to us, to me and Marie. And then we opened up the first temple on uh, Sharp Street. We opened the temple there. Then we moved from Sharp Street over further to the uh, west part of the town. Then my brother, he went into the east side, opened up the temple, with the sister and I worked with, with him. And from that on, we established two temples there. And we had no more trouble. When I tell her there, during 1929, when uh, there was a message came that the prophet had paid during 1929. Then, then uh, brother, that brother was in the paper today. He said, uh, Brother Cook B, he wrote me a letter, said, be in the temple. The prophet is passing through there. And I, I Marie, was in the temple that time. Then when we came in, about 12 o'clock, that's when the prophet passed through. All of them went out of the temple, except I and my wife, we was up on the first, second floor. We heard a mighty noise, singing, everything in very interesting i'm sure i know it was to me and i'm sure it will be to all who view this um brother i could say it sounds like you were the inspiration yeah. behind all of this That's um right. can you tell us how you happened to hear about the more science simple of uh, america i met this follows 1925 here in chicago on state street mm -hmm. uh 33rd in state and some of his followers was out on the street teaching Mm -hmm. uh, telling our people we are not Negroes, black, colored folk, neither children. And said, uh, Allah have blessed us and sent us a holy prophet to teach us our national and divine creed. And uh, so he's now at 3603 in Ellen Avenue, the holy prophet. And they told me, said, now when this meeting over, you all who want to come see him, come with us and you'll see Jesus, who you've been wanting to see. And I said, I sure want to see Jesus. I'm going with him. Mm -hmm. So I went on to, with him at 3603 and uh, we had the meeting. And uh, 9.30, the prophet came out. And he raised up 10 finally and sat down. And I looked at him. I said, I never seen a man like him before. And so I stayed there in the meeting that night. Mm -hmm. And I heard the teaching. And uh, he told us, said, children, I'm the prophet that the father sent me. Mm -hmm. He said, Brother Marcus Gallo, my forerunner, and he warned y'all and told you, Pat and me, to come in prophet. Say, I'm he. Mm -hmm. And so I was perfectly satisfied when I heard the teaching that night. And the next night I came back, I got my card. It mm -hmm. was 1925. And so 1928, as my brother said, he was in Baltimore. The prophet said, son, I want you to go to Baltimore and help your brother. And he said, as soon as you all get uh, a good core of members, I will come out and set you aside, give you a charter, and you will have a chartered temple. And you can begin to sound the trumpet and wake up our people. So I took him at his word. I went. Mm -hmm. Left in April 1928 mm -hmm. and went to Baltimore. And so we stayed there three years, nine months. Mm -hmm. And uh, we set aside two temples there in Baltimore. Uh, I was on the east side, my brother was on the south side. Uh, he had temple number 13, I had temple 22. So I uh, got started with one family, went in their home, the whole family joined. Wow. My secretary, the chairman, treasurer, everyone, they all fell in. And so, we were off there and we set up two nice temples there and uh, we stirred that city, Baltimore. And so they did get on until the conflict come up. And so we have some members here now from Baltimore and they're going to continue on and they're going to reset the temple and going to start it back up and they come to be members here in the grand body here in Chicago. Neither one of you long um, to realize that Prophet Noble Jawali was a divine prophet. Right. Um, what kinds of predictions did he make? And I, if I'm not using the correct word, please correct me, but yeah. what kinds of things did he say would happen that in your life so far you've seen happen? Well, 
he told us, says, uh, if these people repent and reform, he said, this would be one of the greatest possible government on the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. He said, but if you fail to repent, the worst is yet to come upon them. He says, earthquake, disease, plague, famine, everything gonna come upon you. Mm -hmm. So today we see destruction out through the entire world. The great wind, tornado, wind storm. Mm -hmm. And there is no peace among the nation of the earth. While the Holy Prophet, he told us, I'm a universe prophet for all nations. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm a universe prophet, children. He said, I didn't come to stay right here with y'all. Mm -hmm. He said, I got to go. I'm needed. And in Africa and Europe and all over. And so we, he told us that if you don't believe I'm a true prophet, watch my prophesy. Mm -hmm. he said, you will see that come to pass what I uh, prophesied. Me for the very work's sake. Have anyone ever come and brought y'all what I brought you? Mm -hmm. He said, I got what you need. Mm -hmm. Giving you what you need. Mm -hmm. He told us that nationality is the foundation of mankind. It's about a nationality and descent you ain't recognized by the government in which you live in the nation of the earth. Mm -hmm. And so I appeal to you, come. Now I come for the little children around your knees in the own born generation. Say, so I the prophet come from. He said, the day will come. You will be able to teach your children and pat them. They'll come up knowing themselves, know their nationality and descent. And he said, the greatest sin it is upon you that you turn away from your creed from your forefather. He said, they were more. And said, so no one can change man from the sin and nature of his forefather. Use his power of sin beyond the great universe creator, Allah himself. Y'all are moles, they are seed of your ancient forefather. And he's told us that what your ancient forefather were, you are today without contradiction. There is no one that able to change man from the sin and nature of his forefather. Use his power but stand beyond the great universe, create Allah himself. And say so you can't unchange a man, you can call him whatever you will or may. And say so when they brought our forefather here, they were mold wearing this what I'm putting on y'all, fez and turban. So they land them in Jamestown, Virginia, put them on the block and sold them, made slaves out of them. Mm -hmm. He said, now uh, I have come for your freedom. He said, I have any seat to the United States government, to the head of Fisher, mm -hmm. and everything I went for, I got it, and said, they give it to me. That's right. See? He told it that. To me, all of the information that these beautiful brothers are, are giving to us, and I'm sure that other young brothers and sisters across the nation would also enjoy sharing ideas with you. What kinds of suggestions would you make, or what kinds of advice would you give to a young brother or sister in the Morris Science Temple of America now? What I advise them to come, first thing, take out your identification card from the Moy Science Temple number one, if it's necessary. So therefore, then you must attend your meeting and be a faithful member in this uh, society. Then I go on to say this about the Prophet Noble Drolly. One evening, about five o'clock, I was going to the east side in Baltimore to Temple on the east side. There was a bird filled the tree singing a beautiful song till it, it stirred my very curiosity. There's a little bird sparrow I had on my sheet bag like I have on nine. Came out of the tree and light right down on my sheet bag with a little claw fashion in it. Mm. Then I tossed him here and went back into the sky up in the trees. Then that coming day, I got a letter from Brother Melio informing me that the prophet had passed. That was the great warning I got. That was a letter to the little bird. Give me an idea what was expecting to come. And that next day I got a letter. The prophet passed. When he passed, I felt the vibration shook me up. And I didn't know. I said, what are we going to do now? But I had a thought about it, what he said then. See, I didn't come for you only. 
in America and say, I'm a universe prophet. Say, the, those sisters in the Indian now say they're jumping this high now, looking for the prophet. And it, just like he said, he said, he be here talking to us. Say, when I'm talking to you, I'm far away. I'm in India at the time with a mighty thought. Then I, that touched me. That touched my heart. When I heard him speak such a word as that, I grafted. Reno, I believe he was a true divine prophet. He formed miracles that no other man that I have never seen perform in my lifetime. And I believe he was a true and divine prophet. He said, plain English, you don't believe I'm the true prophet? Watch my prophesy. He prophesied these things to come what we are in today. All we got to do, pre prove faithful. Hold fast to his fidelity. Let no man take it away from you. Stand upon that, your indignity. Stand on that, the square, that uh, 45 degree. Now I go on to say, the Holy Prophet talked to me natural, plainly. Some brothers say, you can't look the Prophet in the eye. And the Prophet said, face to face, talk to one another on what the event we are in today. He said, look at me, good, in the official meeting. Said, look at me, say, will you know me? Said, many of them come and say, I am the prophet. See, I want you to look at me. We checked him. I looked at him and all the rest of them. She said, many of them come and say, I am the prophet, the resurrecting prophet. They come with, coming up now, I said, one said the prophet reincarnated spirit come back in him, which was one of the drivers expressed such a gratitude at the, before the public, given you. He was a sheep, went through the sheep boat, same as I and my brother. And therefore, I was said today, there's many prophets there in Baltimore now. Said, they are the prophets. One say, I'm ally. Well, that's common sense. You and I, ally. They teach you and I say, man, we or the seed came right from the heart of Allah. The heart of Allah. And therefore, he, Allah is a thought. And man is a thought. Man is a thought. Allah is a thought. Allah and man are one. Turn it to my brother. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. Um, brother I could Bay, uh, mm -hmm. just quickly, because we don't yeah. have very much time That's left, right. if you could tell us what kinds of things you see yeah. coming uh -huh. in the future for the Moore Science Temple of America. Well, this is a principle for our people. The Moore Science Temple is uh, their salvation. Uh, the thing we need is a principle. Our people, they are very domestic science and very intelligent people. One thing they are liking for, their name and their national descent, their own creating principle. Uh, probably said without a name, you're not recognized by no nation. I found that out to be true. So the Holy Prophet did a great work here. He laid the foundation for us. And he said, now I'm laying the foundation, you all build on it. So I'm the one laying the foundation. And so I see him did great America. He demonstrated what you might, we call a drummer day. He had him that, he do a magician work, put him in a rope, and said, now nah, I want an agentic brother Tommy, not one of the members. And they tied him good in hand, and I mean hog fashion. And he said, now nah, I'll get loose and get up and get out of the chair, and none of you have got to help me. Just drop a white sheet over me. And that's what they did. And so we see. Okay, well, we've been talking with Brother I. Cook Bay and Brother G. Cook Bay, and we thank them very much for sharing their views with us today. And on behalf of the Moorish Educational Film Series, this is Sister S. Weaver Bay. Peace. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.